Welcome to the channel viewers, Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Thank you for coming by, thank you for coming in. Many of you have had relationships that should have worked for all intensive purposes and have not, um, for one reason or another, and that's life. Um, bad management, negligence, bad handling, um, all different reasons which some are not acceptable at my age um, which can get really hard when you get to my age and you're starting to wrestle with things that just um, are not what you would think would be happening that can be difficult just trying to sort this out um, But it's sad how things do turn out because you still love people, you don't do any harm. Sometimes it's better for all of us um, to just let things go when things aren't going right, when there's stress and breakdown in family members on the other side of the family, uh, when you've been separated possibly from being involved in their family. Your energy is different to theirs, that's what the problem is. And that can cause a lot of conflict and a lot of stress for the person that you're with and you've got to, you've just got to say to them and yourself, this ain't working, this ain't really what it's supposed to be about, it's not aligning with a healthy, proper relationship, um, we possibly could be doing better and we're not. We've given it a good go, we've given it a run for our money. Or some silly reason, people get caught in cheating, lying. There's a lot of lying going on now. Where people don't seem to care who lies, who doesn't, what's truth, what's not. Um, there's a lot of deception, a lot of theft, robbery, um, abuse. Abuse in the form of negligence as well. People saying they possibly might turn up and they don't. This happens to men and women. People that have got several love interests at one time, that doesn't work. Um, and just the hurt and pain that's going on out there amongst the masses. Um, you really have to be strong to be able to bring yourself back to a place where you're not reliant on sex or you're not codependent on people. You've got your life in order, you've done the work. Problem is, um, there is a lot of stealth, lying and behaviour going on out there and a lot of people as a result of this, they don't know how to resolve their issues or fix things, they think they can just bluff it or wing it. A lot of these people come out of relationships where that was the way of doing things and going about things and obviously these people, whether it's their fault of their own or not, have ended up on their own. And that's sad. And they're hard work. These people are hard work. I've been with several of them. I'm not saying they're bad people, they're great people. They do great things. They serve the community in their work, they get paid for it. Um, and no, it's not a matter of whether people are bad or not. It's a matter of um, compatibility, compatibility relative to value to a relationship compatibility relative to value of children in your life in harmony with the relationship um, compatibility sexually which is a big one compatibility um, emotionally intellectually spiritually there's a lot of things that you need to be compatible about turning up on time punctuality um, communication if things change um, but there is a lot of things that you're just not going to get um, once you get to my age that you would like to have in a relationship. It's just not going to be there. It's not going to happen. So those of you that do have a happy marriage and you think it's not as good as it should be, then do the work. But don't think you haven't got something special because you have. You really have got something special. Proverbs 21, <clears throat> none of my videos are rehearsed, none of them have outlines, none of them, of the 
three and a half thousand between the two channels. Or is it two and a half? Might be two and a half thousand videos. No outline for any of them. This is 20, 25 years of committed hard work. And I wouldn't say I'm an expert, but just so you know, I go with the spirit. 2021, 20, Proverbs 21, verse 1, the king's heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. He guides it wherever he pleases. Um, this is the thing. People, by nature, don't like to be don't like to feel like they're hemmed in um, they don't like to feel like they're being controlled they don't like to feel like they're being bound down and that's fair isn't it nobody likes to have that feeling and this is where a relationship with the Lord in the spirit is different because where it says the king's heart that's the part of us the deepest part of us king queen that's where we stream from that's where our soul is streaming from deep inside the spirit and it's directed by the lord because the bible says in him we live move and have our being um, and he guides it wherever he pleases so whilst there's, there's another scripture that says man's, um, man has his, man's steps are directed by the Lord or something of that nature, I can't think of it offhand. But this is where a lot of you people are Christian pedigree and you've forsaken your Christianity and it's not doing you any favours. You need to understand that you can be free and led by the Lord. It's a totally different dimension. It's the dimension of what they call the chosen ones, the peculiar people, the Christians, um, the exalted, the anointed. Because you're walking in your freedom and liberty. Uh, for where the, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, the Bible says. But you're allowing the Lord to, without being intrusive, guide you. He's just guiding you here, he's guiding you there, he's doing this, he's doing that. That's the amazing part of being a Christian. It's not intrusive, it works in unison for what you're trying to do to benefit yourself and the people around you. So our heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. Um, if we want it to be. I think there's a part in all of us where God has access and is there, but it's a matter of whether we want to be conscious and listen because Jesus said, whoever hears my voice, the voice is there. The still more small voice is there. It was always there. It was there always. But it's a matter of whether we want to listen for it as we go through our life. Our heart is like a stream of water directed by the Lord. And he guides it wherever he pleases. But he never intrudes. That's the Holy Spirit. So he'll have a destiny for us, right? He's doing his part within us. The doors are there to be open to go down the path that he wants for us. But it's a matter of us being able to listen and hear where he wants to lead us. The Bible says that whoever hears my words and does them, I will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock or a wise person who built their house on the rock. So many of you have and are struggling with things that have happened to you. You don't have the answers for some of the reasons for this. You haven't been given closure. You've been left guessing, wondering, why did this person do that to me? Why did this person leave me the way they did? Why didn't they tell me why? This is one of the cruelest things that these people can do. 
is when you split up with somebody and you don't give them an explanation. I always, I personally, always try and give an explanation because you don't want to leave someone to destroy them. You're leaving someone in a way in which you can leave a message for that person to learn something about themselves that will give them the opportunity to improve for the next person. That's pretty un unselfish, isn't it? Um, I'm leaving because of, and then it's up to them to decide whether that reason is legitimate or not. If they don't think that reason's legitimate, if they don't think that reason's fair or just, then they don't want the message behind it. And that's totally up to all of us. And I've learned some tremendous lessons, even, even in primary school. Um, I had a girlfriend once in sixth class that said, I don't like kissing you because you got bad breath. Well, I started brushing me teeth, me teeth three times a day then, didn't I? Um, she did kiss me again, by the way. Um, but that's what she said, and you take that on board. I've had other girls say, well, I can't speak to you because you one, two, three, four, five. This is going back, way back. And you, so you learn how to listen. You learn how to talk. And but when you're dealing with people that are actually just causing trouble and uh, or there's trouble in the camp and it's not being resolved, that's hard to try and work with after a while. And this is where the Lord can guide us the way He pleases. In other words, let His influence come through us in these situations to get to the bottom of them and to the solution of them as quickly as we can. Because nobody wants their relationship to end, I don't think. Do you? When you meet someone, you want your relationship to last and to flourish. That's what I would have thought. I love my relationship. And the girls that I've been with know that. And I guess they're scratching their heads going, well, why would this man be on his own, only to find themselves sent back home after a while? Because we lose our way. We lose the value for what we have. We start to bring things in that are going to upset and ruin the relationship. Verse 2, people may be right in their own eyes, and this is the thing, but the Lord examines their heart. This is, this is awesome. People may be right in their own eyes. That's grand, grandiose opinion of yourself, or blindsiding yourself from what the true answer is that you need to have and this is the thing what you can't see happening within yourself the Lord does the Lord examines your heart so while we're going along and we're probably in pride or or arrogance and stubbornness and we think we're right in our own eyes I have got this right right we could be injuring somebody we could be causing trauma to somebody we could be damaging ourselves and all the rest of it but the Lord examines our heart he helps us to see what we don't see about ourselves this is the beautiful part of Christianity and some of you people are Christians by pedigree and it's time you give yourself the dignity and the privilege to begin to walk again with the Lord Verse 3, and I'll close with this. The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. A lot of us are running around making, um, enabling people. We think we're helping people, but we're really only enabling their dysfunction. And this is the answer to verse 1, isn't it? He guides us wherever he pleases. Well, the Lord is, more, Lord is pleased when we do what is right and just. When we do what is right and just in our relationships, when we do what is right and just with our children, when we do what is right and just with ourselves. I'm Reverend Dr. J.W. Morrison, Theologist. Thanks you for coming on, and I'll see you on the next talk. Bye for now.